On the program today, we'll take a look at the economy. As Nigeria achieved the trade balance of 6.52 trillion naira in the first quarter of 2024. But that's the message from the National Bureau of Statistics' latest foreign trade in goods report. The total merchandise trade stood at 31.8 trillion naira, representing an increase of 46.27% compared to fourth quarter 2023 and 145.58% compared to first quarter 2023. Exports accounted for 60.25% of total trade in first quarter 2024 with a value of 19.167 trillion naira, and it, an increase of 51% compared to the value recorded in fourth quarter 2023, which was 12.6 trillion naira. Now, the import trade volume for the quarter under review was 12.64 trillion naira, while the export trade volume was 19.167 trillion naira. The breakdown for export trade revealed that crude oil accounted for 15. 0.48 trillion naira, while non crude oil components accounted for 3.68 trillion naira. To help understand Nigeria's balance of trade, is development economist Ayobami Oyalawo. He joins us on the program from our Boja students. Good to have you join us, Mr. Oyalawo. Uh, well, let's start off. These are big numbers there. Help us understand the meaning of this data and its implication for the Nigerian economy. Uh, good evening, Bosse. The, uh, the implication of the numbers are not that far-fetched. Actually, they are simple. It's just that our balance of trade has become positive compared to where we were at the corresponding period of last year. So right now, we are earning more in terms of our exports. We are being able to, we are able to sell to the outside world that we are bringing in to Nigeria. And I think it's the best thing you can expect for an economy like ours that has been struggling in the past few years. So if we are able to consistently maintain this positive balance of trade, if we are able to export more than we are importing, automatically it will signify, one, that our currency will begin to have a better value because as of today, I, I keep saying it that I think the Naira is still undervalued. Even though we said uh, it's, uh, the, it's, it's the market price, I think it's undervalued. And there are a lot of things that need to be done in that area. I think we need to get the balance rightly between our monetary and our fiscal policy. However, these are good pointers to what has uh, been a good time in terms of economy. Yes, I'm sure by the time we finish talking, people on the street will say, okay, how has that translated to the price of gari and rice or whatever is it that are, are the staple on our tables? Yeah, the way it translates is simple. If we're able to sell more, our currency becomes stronger. If our currency becomes stronger, then if you also, that, that means you cannot dovetail that to the challenge that we are facing currently, which is fair price. If we are able to get a better pricing for our Naira, and, uh, because right now I think the current value of, uh, of uh, a, 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 a liter of petrol is about uh, 80, uh, 0.8, that's less than a dollar, 0.8 dollars thereabout. So, which means if we're able to get that, then the fair price will come down if our Naira improves. So it's, there's an intricate linkage between our value, the value of our money, of our currency, the value of our uh, balance of our trade, and then the value of our general economy in, 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 in full generality. So it's a, it's a plus for us. I hope we can maintain this and we can even surpass it. That is why I will say the president has a uh, started very well in terms of trying to balance the economy. Before now, we have a very lopsided economy. We import more than we export. We were, we were earning, we were spending more dollars than we are earning. So which has weakened the place of our economy. So for those are the implications of the numbers. I'll be waiting for further questions from you. And then let's see how much we can do justice to this. Mm. All right, Mr. Yellow. But still talking about the exports, you know, they might seem really massive. But if you look at it, about 80.8% of our total exports 
uh, exports rather was actually crude oil. Uh, do you think we should crude be oil, exporting yeah. that much when we have, you know, queues at our fuel stations? Well, uh, that is why I, I, I said uh, it, it will take a while because right now we, we must also understand that there has been a lot of argument in that area. Are we consuming 30 million liters per day of petrol or are we consuming 80 million liters per day? We must get these figures right. There has been a lot of, uh, uh, how do I put it, a lot of misinformation out there. So uh, exporting crude to make money is not a problem. In a normal system, and I'm going to look at some of the OPEC countries, what you normally do is you have uh, a, a certain number of uh, or amount of crude that you are entitled to per day. Now, what we can do is for Nigeria, this is the number that we will keep back for local production and consumption, and the rest we can sell to international market to earn uh, foreign exchange. So it is not a problem at all. Exporting crude is not a challenge. What we must get right is how much do we need for local production so that we can, one, have enough to consume at home and probably even sell most of our, our refined crude, I mean, refined product outside Nigeria. It's an opportunity, really. It's not a, it's not a minus. If we sell crude, we earn. We can also refine at home and earn. That is why I am very angry at what the uh, NNPC has been doing over the years, making sure that we do not have uh, working refinery. I, I think before now, these refineries, and, and this com also comes out to some misunderstanding or misjudgment by the past government. Somebody sold, another one came and said we are retrieving. Since the day they retrieved back those two refineries from the private sector that they were initially sold to by the former president, till today we have not taken one bottle of oil from those refineries, and we have spent more than $3 billion in, in the name of turnaround maintenance. These are also bad judgments. So I don't think there's a problem in selling crude and refining at home. We just need to get the balance right. All right, then. And talking about you know, some of the specifics and talking about a foreign exchange, uh, what do you think is responsible for the high exchange rate as we have it today? I, I have said it several times, and I'm not scared or afraid to say it again. What has been uh, responsible for a foreign exchange high rate has been criminality. I, I keep saying it. There is no economic truth behind what we are saying. Uh, you, we, 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 we had dollar to Naira at about 750, and the moment the president said, okay, there's no more dichotomy, we will not have CBN doing it for people at 420 and then somebody buying from CBN going to sell us, let's harmonize it. Suddenly it went uh, kaboom. I remember on one other television station, I said it, go after Binance, go after this. Then I also gave two other recommendations. They didn't follow it through. See, the truth is the Nigerian banking system regard, has failed. Uh, yeah, they, were effort. Effort. they went very... after Binance. Yeah, they, they, they went after Binance. They, they followed my recommendation on that. But I've not finished. What I'm saying is that the Nigerian banking system is not helping the Nigerian financial system. Our banks have been a real problem. So many of them have been declaring very crazy numbers in terms of profit. Then ask yourself, where did this money come from? It's not from the, the, uh, from the rich sector. They didn't do any business. They were busy doing and tripping and a lot of criminal activities. And I said it, the CBN government, I mean governor, should go after some of the, these banks. If you go after them, then they need to tell us what is going on. In 20, 30 years before now, you can do any financial business from the Nigerian bank, from, 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 from inside your banking uh, hall. Today, almost everything has been outsourced to wherever this is going on. And th there's nowhere in the world where the banking system shirk its responsibility to the black market like we have today. So it is a problem that needs to be dealt with until we are ready to wear the big acts. We will keep having this challenge. Yes, our, friend, our, our, our the CBN has done a lot. I must give them commendation. The current CBN leader, leadership has tried a lot to clean the system, but until they go after some of these big banks and their leadership, we will not solve this problem. 
Well, Mr. Yalawa, there is a lot more to unpack on this issue of the economy, but uh, we'll have to take a break, and then when we come back, we'll continue from here. Please stay with us. Bala Hamed Chinobu, do solemnly swear. With us on the program, we're talking the economy, Nigeria's uh, balance of trade, and my guess is development economist. Uh, thank you so much again, Mr. Yalawa, for being there. Uh, let's talk you know, some more about this report by the National Bureau of Statistics. Uh, we spent the most money importing manufactured goods at about 5.73 trillion naira of our total imports, which was the total was 12.64 trillion naira. Uh, what does that say about our imports dependent nature? And how do you think we can address the issue? We are still too import dependent and um, before I came I tried to look at which are those areas where we can uh, help to develop Nigeria economy because I remember when we were campaigning I was one of the spokespersons for the campaign of this current government and I remember we, we, are clearly, uh, we were clear on some of our plans which is to reduce our dependency on import goods and uh, a lot of the people who have come in have not really uh, uh, keyed in to the agenda of the renewal uh, of the renewed hope. However, I was looking around and I saw that one of the agencies that has been doing well, uh, at least to a large extent, has been the, the one called Naseni. He's led by a very young man. He's just 32 years old, Khalil, uh, Khalil, Khalil uh, Halilu. Also, he's a younger brother. Very. And then I noticed that so many of the things, for instance, many homes today use. Uh, Let's, I'm just trying to give an example of some of the things he's been doing, and I think these are areas where we need to develop. Uh, uh, I see solar tricycle, lithium battery, and so on. So if you go to many homes today, we are all using them. Uh, most of us use um, rechargeable lamps and uh, this solar energy, and I think they've been doing a lot of partnership in there. So I think what Nigeria needs to do is we need to tap into this area, and so many other appointees of the president needs to look at areas where, look, what are those things that Nigerians depend on mostly and that we import? We can sit down and nail them up. Which of those items can be manufactured or at least assembled in Nigeria? If we're able to get to this point, we can now begin to reduce our import dependence. I keep saying it. You cannot reinvent the wheel, but you can always adapt it to your plan. As a country, we need to sit down. Let the CBN sit down and let us look at the list of those materials that we import the most. We can look at it from top to bottom and say, okay, this, 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 this can be developed or produced in Nigeria. This, 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 this can be uh, and brought in as uh, CKD and can be uh, uh, assembled in Nigeria. We need to get to that point where we are able to produce almost everything that we, you, we consume. And I always use the example of Korea. When Korea started trying to develop, they understand one thing, that they will not develop if they do not close down. And they had this mantra, I don't know how to say it in Korean, but the mantra is, what we cannot produce, we do not need. So they forced themselves to the point where today they can produce almost everything that they need. And I will always give you one small example that we all know. If you remember then, there was one television that they brought to Nigeria called Lucky Ghost Star. Nobody bought it because it was bad tv they went back and redeveloped it today if you go to your house i'm sure you are using an lg product that is how to do to build a country that same useless tv called lucky ghost star was rebranded repackaged and, re and redone and redone almost every nigerian today uses either an lg tv or one LG product so this is how to work we must kneel off those things that we bring in and see the ones we can either produce or the one we can assemble so that we can reduce our import dependence if we are able to do this sincerely i tell you our economy will be less dependent on dollar and dollar and the variables of international uh, monetary system and talking about our strengths as a nation perhaps agriculture is another the very big potential that we have as a people. But then, uh, in this particular period we're reviewing now, which is first quarter 2024, we only managed to export agricultural goods worth about 1.03 trillion naira. And, uh, you know, that compared to 15.48 for crude, 1.90 for other petroleum products. How do we improve the figures? How do we drive focus to our Greek and, you know, get it to be 
uh, revenue spinning machine for us? There are two areas I'll look at this from. One, we must get our mind away from selling agricultural product. It's a senseless and a system that will keep you behind. I will explain. We should stop selling agricultural product as raw materials. We must stop being primary producers. Whatever we produce, we should be able to add value to it. There was a year, I can't remember the exact year, I've used that figure, I have not updated my figures, but Cote d'Ivoire at the time was number one product, producer of cocoa. Cote d'Ivoire made about $16 billion that year from cocoa. Guess what? Netherlands do not produce cocoa, but they add value to it, make it a finer product. As at that year, from dairy products alone, from chocolate products alone, they made over 40 something billion in terms of revenue. So, firstly, we must take our mind away from the primary production, selling uh, uh, agricultural products in its raw form. We must look at the products that are what you call the cash crops. Sit down and think like human beings for once. What value can we add? We must understand the value chain. When we are able to take our agricultural material from the raw form, to the final product where we can add value, then we will start making more money. Because right now, somebody sits down somewhere and determines the, how much you will sell a ton of cocoa. Those people, like I tell you, they don't even understand what the cocoa tree looks like, but they will help you because they will tell you cocoa is an international product, just like our petroleum. They will put value on your own product that you have sweated. It takes about three years from the day you put a cocoa seed in the ground to the day you start harvesting. Yet, somebody sit down and determine the price. So, one, we must take our mind away from primary production, which is firstly. Then, secondly, to boost agriculture, there are a lot of things that can be done. I am, I am very proud of what the CBN has done. They have removed the management of uh, NASA, which was a clog in the wheel of, of development. What the Bahari government tried to do then was to look at the anchor borrower system. Now, what I want this government to do is to go back and dust that blueprint. Now, when you dust the blueprint, these are the things you are going to do. One, when you dust it, you look at what they did. Then the second thing you will not do is, what did they do right and what did they do wrong? We can pick from there. Then finally, you can now say, look, the CBN should not directly intervene in agriculture. Rather, the CBN should create an intervention agency. Why did I say this? What happened was when the CBN under the immediate past management got, got involved in agriculture, everything that happened became a sleaze. They stole billions and trillions till today. Nobody can account for how much was stolen in the name of intervention in agriculture, in the name of anchor borrower. So create an agency that you can now fund by a certain amount. Why am I saying this? If you have a development agency, because CBN should never be a development bank. It's a crime, it is wrong, it is not part of their job, it is not part of their mandate. Now when you have a development agency, you can adequately fund it and monitor it. You can audit it and see what has been done. But when the person putting the money is, is still the one uh, in, uh, 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 supervising itself, there is always that tendency for graft and sleaze. So I expect that the CBM will use both NASA and the Bank of Agriculture to push agriculture, inf invest massively in agriculture, and like I said, build the entire value chain around every product that we produce in large quantity so that we can, we can be able to add value make it to a final product and make more money than selling raw product and then you just become a primary producer for somebody else who does not produce but will make more money than you if you are able to sell your product to them because you don't know how to add value to your products and so much talk really about concentrating on locally produced products. How deliberate do you think we are? I didn't get that. How deliberate are we to get this done? Well, I, I cannot answer that because like I always tell my friends, I am not yet in government. Maybe the people in government can tell us how deliberate we are. However, seeing that the CBN has started the move for changing that agency that is supposed to fund agriculture, which is called NASA, that is a first step. I want to see more steps, and probably the people in charge of agricultural ministry in Nigeria, I, I am sorry to say, I think they don't know their job. This current ministry of agriculture under the current minister has not done anything to 
show me as a person i don't know whether other people have other uh maybe they have another opinion my opinion is that the current minister and we have two of them they don't know their job they don't know what they are doing they need to bring in someone who understand how to drive agricultural value chain and ensure that you put in policies in place that will help boost agriculture you don't want the minister sitting down and cutting tape to share rice that is not what ministry of agriculture should be doing they should be putting in policies and helping to drive uh, uh, uh these policies to the point where as an agricultural nation we can be proud to say look we produce this and we can add value and ensure that the entire value chain is within our own control that is how it works for me all right then and as we wrap up you know in recent time the president has actually uh been making efforts to woo investors to nigeria how do you uh how do we improve the ease of doing business back home to ensure that when these investments come in they remain uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I understand that uh, there are challenges in terms of investment, the investment climate. But from what I'm seeing, the reforms that this present government has uh, embarked on, they look painful, they look challenging. However, I think it is, it is in the right uh, uh, steps. You can look at it from the uh, aviation system, for instance. Remember before this uh, current CBN governor took over, we were having a huge challenge from a repatriating trap fund from uh, uh, airlines and they all refused to do business in Nigeria. Now we have done, we've cleared that, the CBN has cleared all legitimate transactions that were trapped. Now, how you, you, you make these things happen is, one, this currency that we were talking about now, I just spoke about it a, a while ago, harmonizing our currency was one of the biggest steps that this government took. And if we are able to maintain that, then you will open up to show the world that, look, we are transparent. We do not have multiple currency exchange rates because that already is an impediment to business. What, that is one. Then secondly, we need to work on our port system. Our, our, our port system is a mess. That is why people would rather go and use uh, neighboring countries' ports, which are not even as big as ours, but because it is easy. If you go to our port today, almost 100 agencies are there harassing everybody. So we need to clean this up. I, I think the government has started well, but we need to run even faster than we are running because time and tide, I mean tide, wait for no man. The government has started well, but they need to run faster to ensure that we get some uh, 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 closure to some of these problems that were bedeviling Nigeria before now. Development economist Ayabami Oyalawo, thank you so much for your time on the program. Thank you for having me. Well, that's our program. What a repeat at midnight and at 6 a.m. I am Abbasidi at Deneo Adiremi. Do have a great weekend.